Many of you came here thinking or hoping, or perhaps uh, believing that I may start naming names. Well, that day will come, but it won't be today. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. It's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're going to make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. Uh, but the names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. I call them the facilitators of foul play, willing participants in vile conduct. As we identify them, each will be part of this case as defendants. These defendants will not only include individuals, but will also include corporate entities who ultimately profited off of this culture and behavior. I'm looking at banks, pharmaceutical companies, hotels. We know that many of these individuals were paid cash. We know that many of these individuals involved, whether they were the ones being assaulted and abused or they're witnessing other people being assaulted and abused and then paid and threatened and told to leave. So in addition to Sean Combs, you should know the defendants in these cases we're going to file will include anyone, of course, who engaged in the assault or exploitation, anyone who participated in such in any way, anyone who encouraged or facilitated this conduct, anyone who was in the room and watched it happen but made no effort to stop it, any venue or venue owner who was aware of what was going on but failed to stop it, any individual or entity who knew about the conduct and benefited from it but did nothing to report it or stop it, and any individual or entity who covered it up or helped cover it up. Diddy's case just literally went from bad to worse. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Quavy, aka Quavy Sinatra, and I thank you and I appreciate you guys for tuning in to another video. So, if you guys haven't been hiding under a rock, you all know what's been going on for the past few months now. Back in March, Sean Puffy Combs, aka The Diddler's home, has been raided by the federal, the FBI, and Homeland Security. And just recently, he was indicted and taken into custody due to sex trafficking and racketeering charges. If you guys want any more details, I highly advise you guys to check out my previous videos. I'm going to leave it in the cards here. And it's also, you can check it out on my page. But we got some updated news coming from the Diddler. So Diddy recently got denied bail, not once, but twice. Sean Diddy Combs will continue to be held without bail, a judge ruled Wednesday evening, on charges including sex trafficking by force, transportation to engage in prostitution, and racketeering conspiracy. Judge Andrew Carter denied bail and ordered Combs remanded into custody where his attorney said he will be held in the special housing unit of Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Carter said the government had provided sufficient evidence Combs was a danger to the community and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. Carter said the defense proposed the bail package was insufficient. So what does that mean? Did he? And his attorneys are saying, hey, we want to get this bond. We want to get our guy out of jail. Federal government is basically saying, no, your ass is staying in there because he is a danger, quote unquote, to obstruct justice. And he could be potentially be intimidating any witnesses that's going to be providing help or the trial that's going to be coming up. Now, here's the thing about the federal government that a lot of people need to understand. Now, the difference between the state and the federal is that when you're in the state, they can lock you up. And during the duration of you being locked up, they will try to gather as much evidence to make sure they could, you know, come out on top when it comes to the trial. The federal government is completely different. Usually when they take you into custody, they have an insurmountable amount of evidence stacked against you. Now, Diddy went to two judges that denied his bail. The first bail no second bail no d was even willing to put up some collateral and get 50 million dollars to get out of jail and the, the federal government is just like bro we don't want your money we're trying to get you out of here diddy's attorney put out a statement the fight continues we're not giving up by a long shot i can feel told reporters 
outside the courthouse adding that while it's still up in the air whether Combs will waive his right to a speedy trial as his lawyer, he would do everything I can to move this trial as fast as possible. Though he'd much prefer to do that with him out of jail. So Diddy's attorneys are working tirelessly trying to get him out of jail so they can do a fair trial and so on and so forth. If you're Diddy right now, honestly, you know everything is 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 tearing down. All his empire is crumbling. People are not speaking uh, against you know anything that's going on right now, which I'm going to touch upon a little bit later when it comes to a certain thing. In this situation, it's it's it's. I know he sees a huge game over sign over his head. Everything that you work for, you know, and that's the thing about, you know, being a really wealthy individual. You know, sometimes you feel like you reach heights in your career and you feel like you're untouchable. You feel like you can get away with a lot of things, but at the end of the day, nobody is above the law. Remember in the beginning of this video, I stated that things are getting from bad to worse, okay? And that's not even the worst of it. Now, check this out. It's been said that Sean Diddy Combs is facing 120 more sexual abuse claims, including 25 victims who were minors. Allegedly. Sean Diddy Combs is set to face lawsuits for more than 100 people for allegations of sexual abuse and sexual assault. Texas-based lawyer Tony Busby announced the pending civil lawsuits during a press conference Tuesday. The attorney revealed he's representing 120 accusers who are bringing allegations of violent sexual assault or facilitated sex with a controlled substance, dissemination of video recordings and sexual abuse of minors against the embattled music mogul among other offenses. The fact that you have over or close to 120 victims that are going to be coming out and speaking against diddy and 25 of those victims are possibly minors this case has definitely taken a turn for the worse for diddy and it seems like all the problems are stacking and stacking and stacking against diddy and i don't know he's in a situation now a lot of people are wondering yo uh would diddy ever get out i don't think that's the right question people should be asking i think the right question is how long how much time is he going to be doing that's the question people should be asking because here's the thing when it comes to the federal government when they indict you their investigation and their evidence are so thorough as i stated in a previous video the federal government has a 97 conviction rate and they have a really strong reputation of getting people and making sure they get locked up indefinitely so in other words for people that need a better understanding you go on to jail you're going going again. Again. Now, this is what I anticipate that would happen. I believe Diddy is going to have to cooperate with law enforcement and the federal government in order to lower his sentence. The thing is with racketeering charges, you have to do, if convicted of any of these crimes, you're going to have to be doing a minimum of 15 years. And I believe Diddy is about 55, 54 years old currently. So by the time he will get out, if he's convicted of any of these crimes, he's going to be around... 70 years old when he gets out now he can lessen his sentence you know what i'm saying you got to do anywhere between i guess 80 to 85 percent of your time when you're in there if you're on good behavior but that is going to have to come with the cost and what does that cost you know that diddy was known for what he was known for his little freak off parties so he's going to have to give up a little bit of information and, a, and apparently when it came to these freak offs everything was recorded now as far as some of these victims we already had a few people that came out we actually had one individual that came out and said that he was sexually assaulted by combs and end up winning the lawsuit sean diddy combs ordered to pay 100 million dollars in sexual assault judgment in the latest legal setback for sean diddy combs a michigan inmate has won a 100 million dollar default sexual assault judgment against the embattled producer and entrepreneur who has been slammed with multiple sexual misconduct allegations over the past year. According to Detroit's Metro Times and court documents, the award was issued Monday by a Lenawee County Circuit Court judge following a temporary restraining order against Combs granted to Derek Lee Cardale Smith, who is 51, who it describes as Michigan inmate known for his long history of challenging the judicial system with civil lawsuits. 
The lawsuit claims that Combs drugged and sexually assaulted Cardale Smith in 1997 at a party in Detroit. The judge set out a payment schedule of $10 million starting October 1st. Now, this man, Derek Lee Cardale Smith, is currently locked up in Detroit, and he just won a, a sexual assault case, and Diddy's now ordered to send him $10 million per month. This man is in jail, but he's set for life with that money. Now, I think this was the impetus, and this gave the idea to a lot of people that were victims of Diddy to start coming out and, 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 and start pressing charges on Diddy. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to strike when the iron is hot. While this man is down and he's trying to fight for his freedom, you have all these victims that are like, okay, now I think like the coast is clear for me to now, 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 now charge Diddy for the things that he's done to me in the past. We have so had another individual that was allegedly a victim of the sexual abuse that Diddy was doing a few years ago, actually. And here's this video. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by and during the assault. Some of the hardest parts of this pain are the shame and the guilt I have experienced that plays a negative part in my day-to-day -day ability to function properly, being blamed, questioned, and threatened. Graves in the lawsuit says that Combs threatened to ruin her life if she ever spoke about what happened. You all know how I stated earlier that things are not looking good for Sean Puff Daddy Combs. I stated earlier that a lot of these celebrities used to go to what he would call the freak off parties. And notice how a lot of these celebrities are silent. They're not speaking on anything. You know, they're distancing themselves as much as possible from Diddy currently because, you know, they have a brand to protect. With the video that I played in the beginning of the individual making a press conference saying that, you know, there's a lot of other individuals that are a part of this. There's been speculation. There's been proof that a lot of these other celebrities are just as guilty as Diddy. A lawsuit filed against Sean Diddy Combs said the music mogul had hundreds of cameras in his homes in L.A., New York City and Miami. Rodney Little Rod Jones sued Combs in February over several complaints, including allegations of sexual assault, misconduct, forced drug use, and grooming. Jones, a record producer, is asking for $30 million in damages. In a court filing, Jones said he worked with Combs between September 2022 and September 2023 to produce the rapper's most recent release, The Love Album, Off The Grid. In the filing, Jones said the hip-hop star stashed hidden cameras in the mansion in the Homebly Hills, Los Angeles, and his compound on Star Island. The properties were raided by Homeland Security. On March 25th, Homeland Security investigations said the searches were in relation to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation in New York. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home. The court documents allege that Combs operated a sex trafficking venture with his chief of staff, Christina Coram, and his 30-year-old son, Justin Dior Combs. Jones also said the rap icon regularly partied with sex workers and underage girls. Uh-oh. Requiring them to sign non-disclosure agreements and that the attendees were being drugged and trafficked. Jones accused Combs of using threats, force, fraud, and coercion, coercion, coer coercion, coercion? to usher minors into commercial sex acts and pressuring Jones to hire prostitutes for him in Miami, where sex work is illegal. The producer also said Combs set him up to be assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr., who has his own little shit going on right now. If you guys want me to make a video on that situation, y'all let me know in the comment section below. And accused the actor of touching, groping, and fondling him on a yacht rented by Combs. Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones, the court document has said. So now as time progresses, we are starting to see the curtain being peeled back in all the dark and wrongdoings 
that's been going on for a very long time when it comes to Diddy. Y'all let me know in the comment section below. Do you think Diddy is going to get out or do you think he's going to be doing some time? And also, they said there's been a lot of celebrities on these little freak off tapes that have been doing some very peculiar things. Who do you think are some of those celebrities that are kind of tucking their tail now and fear that their name may be exposed or they may be exposed? Y'all let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, comment, and share this video as well. With that being said, I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Y'all be safe. Peace. Nah, forget that. Y'all want to act like y'all want a part of it? We greased up each other. Especially you, Will. I had you shiny, boy. You too, Kelly. Baby, all boys, but I guess y'all forgot. We ripped each other apart at my party. Say I'm lying. Baby, y'all, it's a rock and a little bit of Marvin Gaye make me feel like a man. Rose, you know you like Marvin Gaye. And not to mention you, Meat Mill. Trying to make it look like I'm the only one out here like this.